Welcome to video number one for the ninth module of Assessment for Adult Learning in a Digital Context for the UOIT AEDT program. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. So before we begin, take a few minutes, pause the video, and consider the following questions. Let's begin with the terminology. What exactly is a rubric? Let's frame the definition by looking at the purpose of rubrics and then the types of rubrics. Let's start with the purpose. A rubric is an assessment tool. It is especially useful when students complete some type of authentic learning task. Let's recap what we mean by authentic. If you need to review the notion of authentic assessment, please ensure you view the videos for week seven where we examine this concept in detail. Take a moment to pause to review the definition. Take a moment to pause and review the definition. So a rubric is a tool that is extremely useful for assessing authentic learning tasks. Mary Allen summarizes the definition quite nicely. A rubric is also considered an instructional tool. Why? How? Isn't it an assessment tool? We will come back to this. If we continue with the purpose of rubrics to help make sense of what it is and isn't, Alan lists a variety of examples of tasks that might be assessed with a rubric. Consider why these are appropriate and something like a test is not. So now that we have had an overview of a rubric's purpose, let's now look at two different types of rubrics. The holistic and analytic rubric. Both are rubrics but the underlying purpose of each varies considerably. Think about what holistic actually means. The word typically refers to the whole rather than the individual parts. So it is not surprising then that a holistic rubric has a global score for the overall process or product rather than looking at the individual components of a particular authentic assessment task. In contrast, an analytic rubric provides multiple scores for various characteristics of the product or process. The holistic rubric looks at the overall process or product, but an analytic rubric looks at the individual parts of that particular process or product, where the holistic rubric does not look at the individual components. Let's look at some examples. Take a look at this rubric example. It has one score for each description. It does not look at individual components of what seems to be a problem solving task. So what type of rubric is this? Analytic or holistic? Here's the criteria once again. Pause to review. Hopefully you identified this example as a holistic rubric because it provides one global score or rating of a process or product related to some type of problem-solving task rather than the individual components. Okay, what type of rubric does this represent and why? Pause to review this rubric and the criteria. Again, using the terminology as a guide, if a rubric is analytic, it looks at the task by looking at individual parts. This rubric would have four separate ratings of specified characteristics of a product or process related to this task. The four criteria would be listed here, and the various descriptors for each criterion would be described along this continuum. The final score would be based on the separate ratings rather than looking at the assessment task from a broader perspective. Let's apply what we have addressed thus far. Pause and read over the next few slides. Feel free to rewind and review the descriptions of holistic and analytic rubrics. Consider why. Does this refer to analytic or holistic? Pause and consider. This is holistic because in this is holistic because there may not be a definitive response to a particular problem. So the rubric would be holistic in nature. Does this refer to analytic or holistic? Pause and consider. Does this refer to analytic or holistic? Pause and consider. This is holistic because there may not be a definitive response to a particular problem. So the rubric would be holistic in nature. Why would we do that? 
What about this example? This is analytic because it refers to assessing and scoring multiple criteria, and then the scores are summed. Take a look now at this module participation rubric. It has multiple criteria with corresponding descriptors for each criterion. And take a look now at this module participation rubric. It has multiple criteria with corresponding descriptors for each criterion. And the individual scores will be summed to provide a, a final score. This is analytic. Pause to review this slide. Is this holistic or analytic and why? Hopefully you see that this is referring to a portfolio project that would probably be completed quite differently by individuals. This is looking at the portfolio from a global or holistic perspective. It is not looking at individual components. Why would we not use an analytic rubric instead? We will address this question in the next video. What about when we focus on the overall quality or understanding or proficiency of a particular assessment task? What type of rubric would be suited to this? Pause to consider. Yes, it is holistic because we are looking at the overall quality rather than the individual components. Again, why would we not use an analytic rubric? Pause to read this slide and consider what type of rubric would be used. Yes, holistic. If we use the portfolio example once again, if we had five different criteria, we would more than likely have to go through the portfolio five different times to ensure that we have accurately and fairly assessed the five different criteria. This would be extremely time consuming. Besides, in this portfolio example, what five criteria would you select in a project that might vary considerably from student to student? Again, we'll look at this in the next video. What about when a fairly focused type of task is completed? Yes, analytic, because you might be able to isolate individual criteria. What about this rubric? Is it analytic or holistic and why? Yes, this appears to be assessing a fairly focused task that is examining student observations, predictions, and conclusions. It is very specific to these three skills and each criterion has a description along this continuum, ranging from limited to proficient. What about this statement? What rubric might be most appropriate? Hopefully, you came up with holistic. For example, if students created portfolios, what small error might be tolerated as long as the quality of the portfolio is not compromised? If we look at this excerpt from a holistic rubric for the portfolio, what if a portfolio was fully developed and thoroughly organized and extremely clear and creative in how the learning was communicated? What if all these elements were evident, but there may have been one small typo? Would the small typo warrant a B? We would have to go back to the learning objectives to be sure but more than likely not. If, however, there are multiple spelling errors, then the communication is not clear and would probably not warrant a grade of A. If, for example, you are analyzing muffins by having a rubric that might examine flavor, texture, and appearance, an analytic rubric might provide you with descriptions of each of these attributes thereby providing more feedback on each of these items. Take a moment to pause and consider these questions we will discuss in the tutorial. This is what the video addressed. Our next video will examine a little more deeply why a holistic or analytic rubric might be used. Thanks for watching.